Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 86 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. In this case, we illustrate the floating wire technique for treating a right coronary artery aorto-osteal lesion. And this is the diagnostic angiogram. This is a right coronary artery with significant disease in the proximal and mid-segment, extending all the way to the ostium with severe pressure dampening upon guide catheter engagement. And dampening is one of the challenges with treating aortoosteal lesions. There is a dedicated video, 15.1, for how to approach those lesions. But we'll briefly discuss here the engagement issue, the need for good lesion preparation, and how to deploy the stent so as to completely cover the ostium. Engagement can be challenging, pressure dampening can occur that can lead to ischemia or potentially to dissection, both in the coronary artery or even aortocoronary dissection. So it's very important to prevent this, and ways to prevent it include getting the guide in and out intermittently, using a small guide or a guide extension, the floating wire, which we'll show in this case, or using side hole guides, which are, however, not foolproof, they can still cause dissection, and finally, using the Osteal Pro guide positioning device. The other key challenge for standing aortoosteal lesions is to completely cover the ostium. The stand should not be too far in to miss the ostium or too far back because then it will be very hard to get back in. It should be uh, just outside the ostium one millimeter. Also, it's important to ensure the stand is well expanded, which requires good predilatation. The best way to deliver the stent is to use the so-called independent hand technique in which uh, the left hand is actually moving the guide back and forth, so slightly withdrawing the guide, while, while the right hand moves the balloons or stents, stent in this case, back and forth to ensure the optimal positioning. And this technique is preferable to the standard technique in which one hand constantly holds the wire and the other hand advances the balloon because here we don't have active guide manipulation. So strongly encourage everyone to use the independent hand technique that provides you the best chance for treating aortoosteal lesions in the best possible way. So predilatation was done and that caused dissection, which actually can be a good thing because it's likely to cause expansion, but of course it is critical to prevent losing wire position at this point. After placing a stand in the mid-right coronary artery, now it is time to place the stand in the proximal all the way to the ostium. And what we did is we placed another workhorse wire all the way in the aorta. This is the floating wire, and what this does is essentially creates uh, a marker about where the ostium of the vessel is, so then using the independent hand technique, we can move the stand back and forth and ensure that the stand is just outside the ostium of the vessel demarcated by the wire. And we can see here that the stand is barely out of one millimeter, which is the ideal length. After we confirm it, then the stand is deployed. And then a critical step afterwards is to maintain wire position, but use the independent hand technique to pull the guide back with the left hand, whilst at the same time we throw slightly the stand uh, with um, the right hand. So the left hand pulls back the guide, the right hand pulls back the balloon of the stand, and then when it reaches the position, then it's inflated to further flare up uh, the ostium of the stand at even higher pressure than the original deployment pressure. For the orthoosteal lesions, it is critical to do IVUS to ensure that the stand comes all the way out. And we see here that the stand is well expanded, and now we're coming close to the ostium, and we now see clearly that the stent is protruding into the aorta. There is blood flow on the inside and outside the stent, so we have clearly covered adequately the ostium of the right coronary artery. So IVUS is critical in confirming that, yes, indeed, we have uh, good osteal coverage, which is the case in this particular patient. And this is the final result. We do have good backflow of contrast. Although IVOS is strongly recommended, if you don't, it is important to observe this nice backflow of contrast back into the aorta, make sure there is no pressure dampening afterwards, and that ensures a nice final result. So several lessons from this case. The first one 
about the importance of intermittent guide disengagement to prevent dampening or using the floating wire technique to prevent dampening. And also the floating wire marks the ostium and helps with positioning of the stand so as to nail the ostium and ensure that one, two millimeters of stand come back in the aorta so there is no geographic miss. Third, the osteal stand is important to be post dilated using the independent hand technique to pull the balloon back without using wire position. And finally, it is extremely useful to use IVUS to truly confirm that the osteum has been adequately treated. Thank you.